Hello friends, welcome to the tear and fracture concept of uh, mechanical properties of polymer testing under the regis of polymer process engineering. Now in the previous lecture we covered about uh, the impact strength under the head of uh, mechanical properties in which we discussed about the factors those affecting the impact strength. We discussed about the specific test carried out for the same purpose and we discussed about the pendulum and a drop method for evaluating the impact strength. In this particular segment, we are going to discuss about the tier. We will discuss about the test piece geometries, we will discuss about the standard methods. Apart from this, we will discuss the fracture toughness, then which we will discuss about the fundamental concept of fracture, then how the standard methods, they are being evaluated and they are helpful for evaluating the fracture toughness. So, when we talk about the tier properties, in a tear test, the force is uh, concentrated on a purposeful fault or sharp discontinuity rather than being applied evenly and force required to continuously produce new surface is measured. The geometry of the test piece and the type of discontinuity they will both play a significant role in determining the force required to initiate or maintain tearing. In addition to being a factor in abrasion and fatigue process in flexible material, tearing can happen in practically any product create for sheet or film. Now, it can be challenging to draw a clear connection between the outcome of laboratory test and service performance since tear strength from typical tests is not a quality of the material that is inherent. Now, a method to fracture mechanics for rubbers um, that leverages uh, the idea of energy of tearing, the energy needed to create a unit area of uh, new surface during tearing was developed in many years ago. Theoretically, uh, the tearing energy is a fundamental material attribute that is independent of uh, the geometry of the test piece. So, it was important uh, to employ a test piece uh, where the relationship between the force and energy was rather straightforward in order to acquire the ripping energy. Recently, the tearing of the plastic film has also been studied using a fracture mechanics technique. A tensile test machine uh, with the proper grip is used for the majority of tear tests which entail applying the tensile force to a test item. Now, because the force can rise very quickly and fluctuate dynamically during the several tests, the apparatus reaction properties are especially crucial. A pendulum is employed uh, in the commonly used elm board apparatus applying a tearing force which is distinct method. Now tearing is caused by energy stored in the pendulum and the amount consumed is determined by the ratio of energy lost to the total available. Now it is possible that the initial motivation for this strategy was to have a freestanding device that was reasonably affordable and straightforward. Let us talk about the test piece geometry. The force needed to start a tear versus force needed to spread a tear can be distinguished in a very crucial way. Both the crucial and both are crucial because once a rip has begun, possibly as a result of an accidentally made cut, how well it resists spreading will determine if the damage is catastrophic. Now, in some material, the force required to initiate a tear and the force required to propagate it are they, they are both are comparable, whereas in other materials, the propagation force may be considerably less. Now, cuts acute re-entry angles or a combination of the two might create the discontinuity at which the stress concentration is produced. The majority of standard test pieces have an artificial cut, thus only a method with a sharp angle or no cut would be able to quantify the force that initiates tear. Of course, one may counter that a cut is always conceivable and that is the propagated, uh, propagation strength will be the limiting factor if it is similar. Uh, the geometry that occurs most frequently is one in which that applied force is uh, applied at an angle to the direction of the tear and the stresses are virtually tensile at the tip of the tear. Now, this uh, particular figure, there are three prominent variations are depicted. 
this is the crescent, this uh, represents the delft and this is the angle. This is showing the tear piece geometries. Now, all of these uh, test pieces are used for rubber, but the only one that is currently standardized for plastic is the angle test piece. The trouser test piece, which is uh, as per this particular figure, is the other frequent geometry. This is the trouser test piece. Kissentier which was so popular for rubbers is no longer utilized on plastic because the idea is so straightforward. If there is a lack of material, the depth geometry is especially helpful. The only geometry in common use where an initiating force is measured is the angle tear without a cut. Although maintaining the angle of the cutter properly is necessary to produce repeatable result. Now, shear force must be present in stresses during the trouser tear. It is reasonably simple or simple form to cut and allows one to track the tear propagation course. Now, if uh, cutting occurs while the material is under additional stress, a sharp object will help the material tear. Now, cutting uses both the material's strength characteristics and friction. Therefore, if a stress is applied while cutting friction, the force required to produce cutting are both greatly reduced. Although the geometry can be set up so that the test propagates after piercing puncture test could be seen as a typical type of tear initiation. Cutting or puncture tests often take place uh, under ad hoc circumstances mean to mimic the load and geometry of service. Let us talk about the, some standard test. Uh, international standards only cover two techniques, ISO 683, the geometry of uh, trouser test is, is described in the first section of ISO 683, which is substantially the same as the geometry of uh, rubber. Now, a test piece measuring 150 mm by 50 mm is cut from one end of halfway down its length along the center of its long axis. The two legs are then separated at a rate of 200 or 250 mm per minute while being held in the stationary and moving jaws of unity, universal testing machine or UTM. The standard specifies the tearing force as the mean value after omitting the first 20 mm and last 5 mm of the tearing trace which typically results in an uneven wave like trace like this. This is the wavy structure. Now, the tearing resistance value is created by normalizing these ripping forces by dividing it uh, by the thickness of the film or sheet. Now, specific to the interpretation of tear and addition traces is BS ISO 6133. Now, for traces with less than 5 peaks or 5 to 20 peaks or more than 20 peaks, the standard provides 3 approaches. For traces with fewer than few peaks, 5 peaks, the medium of all peaks is calculated. For traces with 5 or 20 peaks, the median of the peaks inside the central 80% of the trace is calculated and for traces with more than 20 peaks, the trace is divided into 10th by 9 lines with the peak closest uh, to each line being noted and the median of these taken. Let us talk about the ISO 6382. This describes the Elmendorf method which holds the test piece in a pendulum's jaw with one fixed and other attached to the pendulum like this. This is the figure showing the Elmendorf tear tester. When the pendulum is let go, the test piece sustains an initial cut that is spreads across it. The height to which uh, the pendulum swings once the tearing process is finished serves as a gauge for the amount of energy absorbed. The rectangular test piece and the constant radius test piece are the two prescribed test pieces with the former being preferable due to higher reproducibility. The rectangular test piece as its name suggests has sides that measure 75 mm by 63 mm and 20 mm long slit that is cut parallel to and in the middle of the longer side. The constant radius test piece has the same 20 mm slit and 75 mm length but the, its edge facing the cut is curved rather than straight having a radius of 43 mm. 
So, as a result, the tear length and in theory, the tearing energy should remain constant if the rip propagates at an angle of uh, to the pendulum's motion. The standard permits playing up test pieces or adding additional masses to the pendulum so that the energy utilized is between 20 and 80 percent of the pendulum's capacity. Despite the fact that the test is energy based, the ripping force is determined by using the scale reading and the conversion factors that the manufacturer supplies. The tearing force, not the tearing force normalized to the test piece thickness determines the tearing resistance and the method for calibrating the pendulum by adding weight is uh, provided um, in an appendix uh, usually which referred in the reference. However, it seems to assume that the pendulum factor is known to and accurate. Let us talk about the British method BS2782 method 360C. It is based on the trouser method but uses a small test piece and only calls for 250 mm per minute as opposed to the ISO protocol. The maximum force is recorded as the dumbbell is pushed in a tensile machine at a speed of 250 mm per minute. The tear strength is determined by dividing the force by the thickness. Now, before testing, the test piece usually not to cut. Tear initiation is measured using this particular technique. Now, if we compare with the ASTM test, there are four tier test procedures. Although D1938 is based on the trouser method, it uses a small test piece and only stipulates a speed of 250 mm per minute. D1922 employs an element of pendulum and test piece with a constant radius is in accordance with the ISO standard. The angle tear method D1004 only uses 51 mm per minute grip separation speed. This differs from the ISO and BS methodologies sufficiently for one to anticipate variation in test results. Now, D2582, this uses a unique setup for falling darts that is shown in this particular figure and is mean to mimic the snagging hazard. This uh, particular figure shows the ASTM puncture propagation. Now, when released from a normal height, a weight carried is mounted in a guide channel on a tower. A cylindrical tearing probe with a truncated cone at the tearing end is fixed to the side of the carriage and extends horizontally from it. Now, this hits a test piece that is attached to a curved holder right next to the tower the carriage is falling down, causing the distance between the film and the tower to get smaller as carriage descends the tower. The probe barely scraps the film surface after falling 508 mm before penetrating and ripping is it apart. The length of the tear resulting from this is used as a proxy for tear resistance. Let us talk about the other test methods. For ad hoc cutting, and piercing testing to mimic a specific service situation, the different methods have been used. Some individuals consider the impact test for falling darts on film to be a tear related puncture test. It may be useful to use a type of fatigue test in some application where a test is propagated by dynamic straining. In order to examine cut growth fatigue test for rubber in this way, the tear analyzer device has been created expressly for this particular purpose and the fracture me uh, mechanics principle have been implemented. Uh, Dawson and Bose, they note the, the result from the element dart rip and falling dart impact are frequently incongruent and suggest using a single specimen J integral analysis and the fracture tip opening displacement techniques. The Eason and his colleagues used to uh, use a single specimen J integral method on blown film and compare the result to the dart and Elmendorf test. Let us talk about the fracture toughness. By taking into account the load or pressure that causes uh, a crack to propagate, uh, fracture mechanics differs, uh, uh, offers a method of understanding that material uh, reaction irrespective of geometry. The Griffith was the first to suggest this particular strategy in 1920 and it took until 2000 for the first worldwide standard for the fracture mechanics based uh, uh, test on plastic. This, to be, this was published. 
the idea behind the fracture mechanic technique is that the load will cause stress concentration at defects or cracks in the material. So, when cohesive strength of the material is exceeded by the stress intensity at the fracture strip, a crack will begin to spread. In brittle material, a decrease in the total elastic strain energy of the stress uh, sample, this balances the energy required to produce new fracture surfaces. Uh, the energy balance for ductile material, this will include the effect put forward to produce the plastic deformation as well as the development of a new fracture surface. Let us talk about uh, the fundamental concepts uh, for fracture mechanics. The linear elastic fracture mechanics LEFM. According to the theory of uh, fracture mechanics, crack propagation leads to fracture in component uh, and subsequently in its material. Now, it examines the circumstances that led to crack propagation and enables the establishment of quantitative relationship between the external load operating on the component or a specimen or nominal stress and the size and shape of a crack as well as the material crack propagation. So, the stress situation close to the fracture tip is expressed by a linear elastic fracture mechanism concept as the stress intensity factor k. Now, uh, this is uh, the mathematical relationship that theta i j is equal to k 2 pi r to the power half g i j theta. Now, here this is the normal and uh, normal or shear stress, stress this r and this one is the polar coordinates with crack tips as a point of origin dimensional uh, origin. Now, this g i j is the dimensional function, dimensional function. Now, the Irwin introduced the stress intensity factor which can be represented as k is equal to theta n pi a to the power half. Now, this is the nominal stress and a is the crack length. So, these are the mathematical representation. Now, by incorporating a geometry correction factor say f um, a over w, it is possible to account for the finite geometry of each component specimen and fracture. Then from the, the, the this equations, this can be represented as k is equal to theta n pi a to the power half f a over w. For a range of fracture mechanics specimen, this function they are determined. The associated diagrams sometimes they display the recommended specimens preferred proportion for use with the polymer. Now, for single edge notched bent specimen, here the W and uh, 10 mm and B like this, these this, this different parameters have been given for the different type of a notched bent specimen. Now, here uh, let us develop this uh, some mathematical approaches like Fs over B w to 3 to the power 3 and half is a over w. Now, f a over w is equal to 2.9 a over w to the power half minus 4.6 a over w to the power 3 by 2 plus 21.8 into a over w to the power 5 by 2 minus 37.6 a over w 7 by 2 plus 38.7 a over w to the power 9 and a half or a over w is equal to 3 by 2 1.99 minus a over w 1 minus a over w into 2.15 minus 3.93 a over w plus 2.7 a over w to the power 2 divided by 1 plus 2 a over w into 1 minus a over w to the power 3 by 2. 
Now, uh, for a single notched tension specimen, this can be given as K1 is equal to F dot A to the power half over W B A over W and F A over W is equal to 1.99 minus 0 0.41 A over W plus 18.7 A over W to the power 2 minus 38.48 A over W to the power 3 plus 53.85 A over W to the power 4. So, this uh, relevant data is uh, given in this uh, particular segment. Now, if we talk about the compact tension specimen, this K1 can become is F over B W to the power half F A over W, where F A over W can be represented as 29.6 A over W to the power half minus 185.5 A over W to the power 3 by 2 plus 655.7 A over W to the power 5 by 2 minus 10 1017 A over W to the power 7 and a half plus 638.9 into A over W to the power 9 by 2. Now, uh, for an infinitely extended specimen and the borderline case of a crack with notch radius almost uh, equal to 0, then for A, uh, then F a over W is equal to 1. The stress intensity factor reaches the critical value of Kic in megapascal mm. Uh, it also known as the fracture or a crack roughness at the beginning of the unstable crack propagation. The index I, this refers to the mode I loading in which uh, the load applies perpendicular to the crack surface. Now, the fracture criteria for this technically significant concurrence loading is K uh, I is less than n equal to K I C, where, uh, wherein provide the critical value is not uh, exceeded component safety against the fracture is guarantees. Now, different multi axial stresses, uh, this might arise in front of the crack tape depending on the specimen geometry. Now, uh, this particular figure illustrates uh, the impact of a specimen thickness on fracture behavior using the example of uh, uh, PVCC and uh, PP. The change from the plain stress to a plain strain condition causes an apparent microscopic increase in normal stress fracture. Now, this is the figure showing the dependency of the fracture toughness KC, KIC at room temperature on a specimen thickness under quasi static load for PVC. Uh, the certain values of uh, the KIC and uh, is given. So, you can evaluate the things accordingly. Now, the fracture toughness, this depends on the specimen geometry when the crack tip is subject to plane strength. It depicts how toughness is impacted by the, the material structure, loading rate and environmental temperature. In the linear elastic technique of empirically rediscovered relation is used to estimate the geometry parameter B A and ligament length. Now, this can be given mathematically by this particular formula where uh, theta y, y is the yield stress, yield point and beta is the geometry constant that is the, the material dependent. Now, let us talk about the crack type opening displacement concept. Now, this is given by the Doug Daley crack model. The foundation of it is a presumption that the, in situation of ductile material behavior, the crucial plastic deformation of the crack opening is also known as crack tip opening displacement. This determines the fracture process. Now, this is uh, the particular figure shows the Doug Daley crack. Now, this particular equation is used to uh, on CT specimen to determine the critical crack tip opening displacement that is delta C is equal to VC over 1 plus N into A plus Z over W minus A. VC is the crack mouth opening displacement at the start of unstable crack propagation. Z is uh, the distance of a knife edge from specimen surface and N is uh, 
the rotational factor. Now, based on the plastic hinge model for a bending loaded SENB specimen, this can be given by the mathematical representation based on this particular figure. Now, thus, uh, if we see by deducting the amount of a deflection from an unnoshed specimen from the maximum deflection f max of a notched specimen, the calculation of critical crack tip opening displacement was restricted to the area at the notch tip. Now, rotational factor n is load dependent and the load increases, the hinge point moves closer to the uh, fracture tip. Simultaneous crack mount uh, opening displacement and load line displacement measurements on the quasi static load CT specimen. This shows that the rotational factor takes on the limit value of n is equal to 4 at the time of a fracture. So, if we talk about the LEFM concept has a straightforward relationship and that is given by this particular mathematical representation. The constraint factor m is experimentally found in PVC with m is equal to 2 mostly a plain strain state as well as on the polypropylene with m is equal to 0.7. Now, this is uh, uh, the figure showing an indication of the displacement of the crack tip opening and uh, uh, the creation of the stretch zone in front of the crack tip. Def the deformation of the crack tip under the load one prior to the loading and uh, subsequently uh, subsequent loading three initial crack tip uh, is given. So, this, this, these are the various uh, uh, scanning electron microscope images gives the clear cut depiction about these cracks. Now, when a material behaves ductile, crack propagation is characterized by the steady uh, crack growth and the beginning of which is determined by the critical value. The, this value is uh, clearly visible in this particular same image. Uh, as a stretch zone on the fracture surface originates from the blunting the initial crack tip due to the plastic deformation. And thus, uh, the requirement for the specimen geometry is given in this particular mathematical representation. Now, J integral concept, because of uh, its energy based approach, the fracture process uh, that Sharapnov and Rice introduced, the J integral has come to dominate, dominate the significance for polymer. The reason that has undergone plastic deformation is encircled by the path independent contour, that is the integral part and the region that has undergone the elastic deformation is encircled by the closed path of integration. So, x and y components they are defined as j x is the integration of r w d y minus t i j into n j del u over del x d r and j y is equal to integration of minus w dx mi minus t i j n j del u or del x dr, where w is elastic strain energy density, t is the component, t is the component of traction vector. And, uh, and n is the component of unit vector normal to r around the crack tip and u is the displacement vector component. Now, this is the determination of the z integral which here this the path dependent counter. Uh, a contour reintegral with one plastic deformation reason and uh, two elastic deformation. Now, this uh, is given like this and this this is the experimentally determined load versus load line displacement curves for various crack length and energy. This is the energy depiction obtained by the, the planimetering the dependency and this is the differentiating the curve with the jet integral. Now, this, uh, this figure B to D show how the experimental uh, determination is carried out using recorded load versus load line displacement curves with a different fracture length as a starting point. Planimetry is utilized to calculate the deformation of the energy Ag as a function of A and Ag over B relation is given. So, the using the graphic differentiation, this uh, we have J 
is equal to 1 over B del over A, del AG over del A, that outcome based on the load line deflection or displacement. Now, the J integral and energy release rate G are equal in the situation involving the elastic material behavior and this can be represented J i is equal to G i is equal to K i square over E for plane stress state or J i is equal to G i is equal to K i 1 minus is square for plane strain state. Now, K i c j values are extrapolated using these uh, formulae. Now, the connection between C T O D idea and the j integral is provided by j is equal to m theta y delta I C, where m is referred to as a constant factor and if it is requirement is met the crucial values of j and uh, that is the genuine material values they are independent of geometry uh, like b a is greater than equal to epsilon j over y. Now, epsilon is uh, the proportionality constant for geometrical size criteria in J integral concept. Now, currently ISO 13586 is the sole worldwide standard used to measure the fracture toughness. This is based on LEFM employing either compact tensile uh, test piece or single uh, edge notch bending test piece as per this uh, particular figure like here single edge notch bending SENB and here the compact tensile test piece. The techniques are primarily meant for the rigid and semi rigid plastic however there are restrictions on the dimensions of the test piece and the linearity of the load displacement curve to ensure that LEFM conditions are at least somewhat true. The limit on linearity is arbitrary and correspond to the better than 10 percent non-linearity. The initial crack must be sharp enough that the values obtained would not be significantly altered by even the sharper crack. Now, typically a razor blade is used to open a crack after matching a sharp notch. Uh, the fundamental test parameter advised uh, 23 degrees Celsius and 10 mm per minute and it is advised that the speed greater than 0.1 meter per second and loading duration of less than 10 meter per second are likely to uh, millisecond are likely to create dynamic errors. Additionally, ISO is uh, developing a method for calculating the fracture toughness at fairly high loading rates and the basic loading rate is, is stated as 1 meter per second but it is noted that the time to have fracture has more significance than the loading rate. The reason for using numerous test pieces with the different initial fracture lengths to acquire the GIC is largely due to the decreased accuracy anticipated at higher rates. Uh, a servo hydraulic testing machine, a falling weight or a pendulum impact device or another method for applying the load can all be used under ASTM. The method is based on the multi-test piece approach with each being loaded to a different uh, displacement and producing one point on the JR curve and the test piece configuration similar to those LEFM are employed. Now, test on distinct unknown test piece are used to make corrections for non-fracture energy. So, dear friends, in this particular segment, we discussed about the various test protocols uh, for testing of the polymeric materials and for your convenience, we have enlisted several references as per your choice. You can use all uh, use these references. Thank you very much.